Hello, Magic Casters of all shapes and sizes. My name is Chance. Welcome to my spellbook, and thank you so much for tuning into the seventh episode of our second level spell series. Today, we're going to be taking a look at one of the most complicated ones for me to understand, and in all honesty, could be a subject of a session zero in of itself. So, yeah, I don't get into why that is in a little bit here. Today we're going to be taking a look at Augury, which is pretty cool, granted, and I would probably suggest taking this, in all honesty, but it really depends on what your DM thinks of it, so please, God, run it past them. Uh, first and foremost, Augury is usable by the Cleric exclusively. There, there's a couple class exceptions to that, but uh, for the most part, it's only ever found on a Cleric spell list, so please bear that in mind. And it is found in the Player's Handbook, so we should all have access to it just fine. Fantastic. With that intro out of the way, let's move on to its mechanics so we can at least get a general idea of what this spell's about. Your cast time is one minute, and it can be ritual casted by putting an additional 10 minutes of your time into it. The range is self, the duration is instantaneous, which is pretty cool, and the effect at a glance is as followed. You use some form of a divining tool, and you receive some insight as to the result of your future actions within the next 30 minutes. The spell is not considered to be all-knowing, and if casted more than once a day has a cumulative 25% chance for each casting that you get a random reading. Components are somatic material and verbal, meaning you have to gesture with one hand. The material component is essentially uh, any divining tool that's worth at least 25 gold piece. And the verbal component implies you have to speak forth an incantation. The school, unsurprisingly, is divination, which makes sense because you're kind of convening with gods. Fantastic. Now, with that brief summary out of the way, let's take a look at its full description where I can further discuss why I think this spell is a little ridiculous in of itself. By casting gem inlaid sticks, rolling dragon bones, laying out orient cards, or employing some other form of divining tool, you receive an omen from another worldly entity about the result of a specific course of action that you plan to take within the next 30 minutes. The DM chooses from the following possible omens. Wheel for good result, woe for bad result, wheel and woe for both good and bad results, nothing for results that aren't especially good or bad. The spell doesn't take into account any possible circumstances that might change the outcome, such as the casting of additional spells or the t loss or gain of a companion. If you cast the spell two or more times before completing your next long rest, there's a cumulative 25% chance for each casting after the first that you get a random reading. The DM makes this roll in secret. Oh, man. So, if you haven't guessed already, my beef with this spell is how general it is and how little is actually specified. So, and this is true for life in general, which is kind of meta-commentary, I guess, but it's very, very difficult to determine what is a good result and what is a bad result, especially the way this spell is worded. So... It implies, loosely, loosely implies that this spell is related to the caster. Okay, so let's say, oh, you're, you gotta be cleric. So let's just say you're a cleric, okay? And you got a rogue in your party. And the rogue has been up to his usual shenanigans and has gotten busted by the police and he has a bounty in a particular town you wanna visit. Now, you don't like the rogue, but you're kind of neutral about it, okay? So, you cast this spell because the party wants to know if it's safe to go into town or not. Now, this is where it gets complicated. Because you don't particularly care about the rogue, is the result automatically going to be nothing? Because whether or not he gets picked up by the police or not, you're unaffected, you don't care. 
Is it good because you're a cleric and you're kind of just and you think the rogue deserves his punishment? So would you get a wheel? Or would you get a woe because losing the rogue would be bad for the party? It's very complicated. And not to mention, if... The way, the way it's worded is it's not the DM directly communicating with you. It's an omen from an otherworldly entity. So, let's say you're aligned with a fairly evil god, or, or let's say you're a trickery domain cleric, or anything like that. Then how much more would that complicate the spell? That's why I think this is a great discussion to have in a session zero or out of the table. My personal thoughts, uh, please let me know what you think down in the comments. Maybe I'm just reading way too much into this, or maybe I'm not reading enough into it. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments. I also don't like the fact that it says it doesn't account to any possible circumstances that might change the outcome. Isn't that kind of the point of this spell? I get it's incredibly low level, I get divination magic is typically top tier, and I get convening with gods is nothing to be considered lightly. But still, it just seems, it seems so general. It seems so general. In any case, let's move on to some alternative uses. Needless to say, these assume that you've had that discussion with your DM. Then I think that's fair. I think I would highly encourage it. I would highly recommend it. You could use this to just plot out a path. You know, if you don't know what to do, if you're at a loss, just basically treat it like a like a magic eight ball you know um, you could also use it to determine if a place is safe or not um, that is definitely something that would apply to almost any case would give you a definite good or bad result just imagine you're staying there cast a spell if it's a good result you can stay there if it's a bad result I'd start casting up some spells you can also use this when purchasing unknown magic items um, will purchasing this be a good decision wheel whoa pretty straightforward pretty cut and dry you could potentially also use this to gain the effectiveness of plans if everything goes according to this plan here Will it be successful? Wheel, woe, stuff like that. Um, naturally, it doesn't take into account anything that... Really anything, when you really read the spell. But it'll give you, at the very least, a general idea as to whether or not the fight is... Comparable to your current level. That's kind of the metagame version of it, but it makes sense. Fantastic! If you have any ideas, things you want to share, or stories involving Augury, please put them down in the comment section below. I really appreciate it. And on spells like this, man, we need all the help we can get because it's just so general. And once again, maybe I'm missing something, but I've read it like five or six times now and it always seems to be a little bit confusing, but uh, hopefully I was able to help. That being said, I want to take a quick moment to thank our patrons, Marcos G. Guzman Jr., Arena, Tanner Frazier, Kenny Garcia, Bruce T., Tato Seal, Spider-Man, and his amazing friends, Thank you so much, guys. I really do appreciate it. I hope every oh, sorry. And if you want to chat with us, uh, please check out our daily live streams every day from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. There are some days where life gets in the way, but for the most part, we're pretty dang consistent, let me tell you. And if you like that cool hand-drawn Warforge up on the screen and you'd like your own hand-drawn D&D character, please check out the Patreon videos to figure out exactly how to do that. That being said, thank you so much, guys. I really do appreciate the time. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and as always, happy casting.